Okay, I think we're ready to start. Um, so welcome to today's webinar. Um, today's webinar is entitled Integrated Dynamic Planning with Palantir Dataflow. My name is Melissa Foy and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Uh, before I start, uh, Stephen, are you able to hear me and see my screen? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. Um, just a couple bullet points, just to let you know that this presentation will be recorded today. All of our attendees have been put on mute, and this is just to avoid any background noise during the presentation. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, so please type in your questions in the chat box. All questions remain anonymous, so please don't be shy. Uh, due to the volume of questions that we generally receive, sometimes we are not able to get to all of them. If we do not get to your question during the presentation, we will send you an email with an answer or more information pertaining to the topic. So moving on to the webinar, as I mentioned before, today's webinar is entitled Integrated Dynamic Planning with Palantir Dataflow. Integrated dynamic planning eliminates the top-down or bottom-up planning processes typically associated with many organizations. Integrated dynamic planning, or IDP, refers to the centralization of planning data and bringing budget, economic, and financial planning processes more closely together. IDP allows for questions to be asked of the business plan without having to repeat, resubmit, and or redo work. So Palantir Dataflow is the foundational piece to IDPS, which is Integrated Dynamic Planning System. Palantir Dataflow is our data management platform, which manages the data throughout the life of an asset from prospect to abandonment. Through its use, companies are able to maintain an accurate and updated view of its portfolio of assets and easily build consolidated data models. Palantir Dataflow eliminates the need for data to be sourced from multiple disconnected systems, delivering a collaborative and workflow-driven planning environment. So for today's presentation, uh, Stephen Clark will be presenting. Uh, Stephen Clark is a senior business development executive for Palantir Solutions in our Houston office. Stephen has a bachelor's in business administration, majoring in marketing with a minor in management from Texas Tech University. He is currently working towards a MBA, MBA in general business from Texas Tech University as well, in addition to working at Palantir. So he's extremely busy. Um, he has three years of business development experience with the oil and gas industry and over 16 years of sales and management experience. So with that being said, I'm pleased to pass the presentation over to Stephen. And thank you, Melissa, I appreciate that. Let me just go ahead and get everything. Melissa, can you see my screen and hear my voice okay? Yep, perfect. Perfect. Um, again, uh, thank you everybody for taking the time to, uh, to uh, hear the presentation today. Um, approximately be about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, I know everybody's extremely busy these days, so I'll try to keep it at that 30, 45 minute mark. Uh, again, my name is Stephen Clark, and I'm a senior business development executive for Palantir Solutions here in Houston. Um, my goal with this presentation is to be more geared toward the data flow presentation or data flow demo versus a PowerPoint slide, but I wanted to kind of set the stage for that with uh, a bit of PowerPoint. I know that they can be a little mundane, but bear with me and I'll try to get through these just as soon as I can. So, Just the overall introduction of Palantir, some, uh, we may have some new attendees who have not been to one of our webinars yet. Um, Palantir is a global software and consultancy firm uh, dedicated to the upstream oil and gas market and, in the, and is the leader in the subject matter we'll cover today, which is the integrated dynamic planning. Being just that, a global firm, uh, we have offices across the globe, uh, ranging from Calgary down to Perth and pretty much all points in between, with a general focus of having offices close to our clients, being able to have that uh, just about as quick on-time customer service as we can, as well as having uh, around-the-clock customer support as well. And as you you can see from the snapshot just a small number uh, of the clients we serve, uh, we currently service, uh, ranging from 
uh, both small and uh, super major as well. But I won't really go into too, de too much depth, but they are spread globally. So when we talk about service and offerings, uh, we supply to the companies on the prior slide. These are those service and offerings. Um, I'm not really going to go into too depth on this particular slide, just as an overview of uh, some of what we do offer here at Palantir. What I will do uh, is what we're going to do today is cover Palantir data flow in conjunction with integrated dynamic planning. So I mean, just keep in mind that the two pieces we're going to cover today are data flow and the integrated dynamic planning. Should you have any other questions with regards to anything you see on this slide, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out and we can definitely cover those at a later date. So let's go and jump in and really talk about what is integrated dynamic planning. Um, I'm not going to go into, Melissa really covered integrated dynamic planning well in the intro. Uh, I'm not going to go through this wordy definition. Uh, I'm assuming that everybody on the presentation here can, can read fluently. Um, what I will do is focus on pretty much three or four words here within this definition. That is the central, centralization of data. Uh, when we talk about IDP or depending upon the system, IDPS, this is what we're talking about. This is the main point to integrated dynamic planning is having that central centralization of your data. So when we start to envision IDP or IDPS um, within an organization, what we're doing, um, we're kind of looking at different stages and generally they will fall within one of these five. Um, within your organization, if you were to just look at this slide, I'm sure you could probably see where you would fit. Uh, most organizations we deal with today, when we first start conversations with them, is within these first three. Um, most often the top two, but then some we, ha we do have, they're more advanced, that kind of go into your stage four and stage five. But for the most part, when we en engage clients, uh, they are at a kind of linear process where it's the business unit doing the numbers, doing the reporting, pushing it to your executive team. The executive team will make, should they decide to, any adjustments to the business unit's um, plan, and then they will then publish the business plan to the overall corporation and the stockholders. Uh, stage two, a lot of companies are right here that we deal with when we, when we first start interactions with them. The business unit will then push the information as they did in stage one, but the executive team can kind of give feedback to the business unit and business unit can make any necessary adjustments, send back to executive team, executive team makes their adjustments, does a business plan. As we get to stage four, three through five, this is your more advanced and sophisticated systems. And this is where the integrated dynamic planning comes into play. Here where you see the planning space modules here in the middle, this is where the business unit will send their information, have it in there, as I said in the prior slide, that centralized uh, data point where they have all their information. The executive team can pull from that, give their recommendations back. And what we're doing here, we're creating that iterative loop of communication and sharing of information from the executive team to the business unit and back in order to produce the business plan. Now, as we come down to stage four and five, this is where you're really getting into the meat of the integrated dynamic planning and kind of what we're, what we're going to talk about today at a high level. Uh, of course, we can really dig deeper into it should you see fit at a later date, but um, what we're going to talk about here today is mainly around stage four and five and the, uh, the incorporation of Palantir data flow. So when I say Palantir data flow, what is that? Um, it is the foundation for our centralized um, planning database. It is the, the foundation for IDP or IDPS. <clears throat> so Palantir data flow, in short, is a flexible data management system uh, that helps with all roles of the, of the organization. Um, the, this is the, the teeth of the system is that it provides a secure and standardized data repository 
for the uh, generation and management of life of field data for oil and gas um, organizations. What it does is it allows for a configurable workflow and kind of your integrated uh, versioning, archiving, and approval. It takes all these, all your disparate systems, rolls it into one, one central location. <clears throat> Let me back my apologies. Um, so what it does is it tackles, um, enables you to tackle the data management challenge. Um, and this is really a challenge not just for any one person or any one role within the organization. This is spread out through the organization. Um, this is where you have data spread out, uh, files lost in your email system. Your email system can act as a kind of de facto uh, data repository uh, where you're digging up versions of an Excel spreadsheet that might have been spread through the, the organization or the team. Um, you spend a lot of efforts trying to collect your data versus trying to uh, spend all your time validating it and working from that and, and improving upon that. You're spending all your time trying to find it. And this is where data flow comes in. So what I want to do is kind of touch on when we speak with organizations who have approached us to, to help with this, uh, with their integrated dynamic planning, um, more often than not, we run into a system very very much like this, where you have your different roles within the organization, various different team members that will do their individual works within their own workspaces. And when they go to share their information with their with their team members or other people within the organization, they generally will do it via email, possibly through file shares, but more often it's through email. And I'm sure at some point, other people on the call here have experienced kind of the pains of what I'm about to explain. But if I was to take you through a mock scenario, if if I'm a geoscientist and I pull some information from my GeoX system, run my numbers, pass it over to my reservoir engineer, Melissa, Melissa's looking at it, may not necessarily agree with it, so she wants to make some adjustments. Um, she then passes that over to the facilities engineer, Kirk, Kirk looks at it, agrees with about 95%, but there again, Kirk has his own um, pieces he needs to add, so he then runs it from his Excel or Questor, um, uh, aggregates it all together, and then pushes it over to the economist, um, Eston. Eston then looks at the numbers and has a pretty serious question. So when he does have that question, he's not gonna go to Kirk, the facilities manager, or Melissa, the reservoir engineer, He's going to come to me, Stephen, the geoscientist. When I look at those numbers, they're foreign to me. They're Greek because I have no idea where he got them. So this is where we run into the problem of you're not having the truest of data, having the ability to trust and know that that data that you got is a, in the truest sense. So this is where we bring in data flow. <clears throat> data flow, what it, the as I said earlier, is the foundation IDP. What it does actually sits on all to, on the top of all your systems, whether that be GOX, all the way up to your economics uh, modeling solution, whether it be Cache, could be Aries, PEEP. Um, of course, it works with all your Excel uh, spreadsheets as well, and allows for that centralized centralization of data, having all the versions, the revisions, the approvals all in one place. That way, when I do upload my my numbers, and Melissa pulls them down, makes her adjustment, adjustments, resubmits them, and then Kirk brings them down, resubmits his. So when Eston, the economist, looks at the information, he knows where that information came from. He knows that I initially started the, the workflow, the workflow progressed through to where he can. That way, the elimination of a lot of the questions have been, have been handled and we can get to the task at hand of uh, making money and being able to uh, get that products out to the customer. So what I want to do when we uh, go through data flow, there are some four high-level points I want to cover. Um, I want to go into 
how uh, key data is often stored in many different systems. I'll show you where you'd be able to connect various databases, upload various Excel workbooks. Uh, we'll go through data flow as a whole. We'll kind of take an overarching look at it. Um, then we'll go through and look at revisions and version control, uh, knowing which is the, the latest and greatest. Um, after that, we'll touch on the security and permissions. Um, and should we have time uh, in the presentation, we'll touch on some just some standardized reporting that you can go through uh, and report through Dataflow. So with that said, let me go ahead and get out of this slide deck. And I will go ahead and launch Palantir Dataflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by taking a 15,000 foot look of Palantir Dataflow to get a little familiarity of it before we get started. As you can see, Palantir Dataflow has three tabs. Manage Data, Reporting, and Administration. The Manage Data is where a majority of our customers and the users of the organizations we do business with spend most of their time. However, there will be a good amount of time spent in reporting. And then finally, not so much in administration. This A lot of this work is done at implementation. And then there might be a few users within the organizations of the clients we do business with that might do some of their work here. But that's very small. A lot of the work is done here in managed data. And with that, that takes us to bullet point number one. Key data is often stored in many different areas. The beauty of data flow is in its hierarchy structure, here to the left. This tree structure can, can be customized to, to be broken down by region, by geography, or by business unit, and roll within that. For demonstration purposes, I've gone with a demo company we call Arner Oil and Gas. Here within Arner Oil and Gas, we have it broken into geography as, as well as business unit. So as we click through each level within the tree, individual information can be stored here. So if I'm a member of the Africa group, I can have my own individual information stored here that other areas or other groups within the organization, whether it be the people who work in Asia, people who work in Europe, may not be able to see. But as I keep clicking down, I can have specific information for each node. Here, I have a ge uh, geographical map possibly could show me where all my blocks are within this particular region. As I click here in the block, this might be able to tell me where all my fields are. And with that, within that, it might be able to tell me where all my wells are. So as I clicked on BOMO, I'm able to see a lot of information within this particular BOMA field. And this is all information that's been rolled up into via these five wells. So if I was to click on a well, I can see the production and reservoir information for that particular well. And there again, this is all brought in through all your third party systems, whether that be your economic system like a Palantir Cash or a Ares or PEEP or a field development system like Palantir Resource or Intersight or any other third party database or Excel workbook you might have. So if I go across and click on production, I can get a, a quick idea of the production levels for this particular well on gas, oil, NGL. And I can get a graphical representation representing those three. But here again, the beauty of Dataflow is it's bringing all my different systems into play. And I can go back and look at my BOMA. And I can click on production. 
Now I'm looking at all five. I didn't have to go log out or have multiple screens up looking at different systems, trying to aggregate that information myself, having to export into Excel and do the work there. This is all here for me. And there again, please keep in mind that the tabs you see here, these are for demonstration purposes and these can be customized to however you and your organization want. Here I have CapEx, OpEx, and the like. But as you can see, every place I've been within Dataflow allows me to, to keep the tab open and I can quickly pan back without having to backpedal and start all over. I can get to go back to a well, take a look at my reservoir information, possibly compare that to a BOMA. If I had a reservoir tab here, I could do that. There again, that's customizable. But each one of these is information we can store within each level of the tree here. So what that takes us to, is like I said, is being able to bring all your systems into one area, into one quote unquote dashboard. You're looking at all your information here versus having to look at three separate systems, multiple databases, bringing up multiple spreadsheets. And in doing that, that's where one of the big pieces in the power of data flow comes in. So as I look at that, I simply slide over tools here. And as you can tell, I'm able to load from many, many different databases and pull many different Excel workbooks. For time's sake, I won't go into how to particularly load a database or how to load Excel, but this is where you do all your work in doing that. So what that takes us to is our bullet point number two, and that's revisions and version control. <clears throat> and knowing which is the latest and greatest piece of information you have. What this does, this touches on the slide that I was talking about earlier with regards to the different roles and how information is passed along in the organization and how your email box is kind of turned into a de facto data warehouse. With that though, the problem lies in that we're not sure what information is valid, what's been changed, what's not. If I'm at the end of the chain, I look at the data, I'm curious as to where it came from. I'm going to go back to the creator. And oftentimes the creator does not know where that information is as it's been changed so many times. So what that does is it brings me to, like I said, bullet point number two. That's being able to, to track my versions and the revisions. So what I did was I can click on, and I can do that within any stage of my tree here. I can look at those changes. For argument's sake, we're going to look at BOMA. So as I click on my BOMA field, I can click on compare. And quickly, I can get an idea of how many revisions have been done. Here I've got 27 different revisions. And I can take a quick idea, quick look at, if I wanted to take a look at revision number one and compare that to my latest and greatest. As you can see, quite a bit of information has been changed. Quite a bit of information has been added. Here you can tell from version one, we didn't have country. So with the latest and greatest, we put in Angola. And then changed any number of different variables within this. Anything from my 1P reserves to, to my oil price light. And you can see which, which pieces have been changed. So as I get out of that, I can only see, not only see what's been changed, I can go and see who changed it. So if I go back, let me get back out of this. What I did is I just went up to history and click on that. And I can get a real high level look at how many changes have been done, what version has been a revision as part of, when it was done, any comment that was made. So if I was to go in there and make a change on any of the information, what it will do is prompt up a, a comment. And depending upon how 
day flow has been implemented, that could be a requirement for each individual for each business unit whenever they make a change. So if you went in here and I just want to take a quick look at what kind of changes have been made from version one all the way up to 28. I want to do not one, but I want to do 10. Get back to the wrong number. I'll do 10, resync it. I can see which versions have been done all the way from 10 to 28. I can see that it started in August 8th of 2013 and then wrapped up, or the last one was October 18th, 2003. So if I was want to look at what was changed in those, in those times, if I want to take a drill down, if I'm the economist or if I'm a reservoir engineer in our prior scenario, I can look at what total revenue had been changed and why it was changed. And if I really needed a, had a more in-depth question, I could go to the user here, Issy, made one change. What you do is you update his revenue expression. If that's satisfactory, I can simply hit approve, keep going. So what that does is kind of takes us into the third part of our presentation. And that's the security and the roles within the organization. And it ties hand in hand with the versions and the history and the revisions. So if in doing that, and like I said earlier, not a lot of people are going to spend a lot of time in this particular area, but I think it's powerful enough that I want to spend just a few moments and go through and show you how some of this is, is grouped in. For me personally, one piece I really find interesting is the work groups, especially if you have a large organization. A particular organization might have a few thousand employees. Within that, you might have 15 to 20 different groups or business units. And within each business unit, you might have 10 to 15 different people within each business unit. And within those, you might have teams of five or six. So if I wanted to go in and make mass changes to the permissions of each individual team or each individual business unit or just a blanket who's a manager, who's an administrator, there again, I can bring those particular roles in here. If I want to change the rights with the administrator, I can go click edit. I can assign the permissions for each of these individual administrators. Click OK. I'll click cancel. Or if I want to give managers a different role and assign them a permission, I might not want them to have full access. I can deny that and then come back and take off different pieces. So if we wanted to look at not just the work groups, but if we wanted to look at ind individual users, and I wanted to see Scott Busing, I wanted to see what permissions he has. He's an administrator, so he should have all rights. But if I wanted to change him from an administrator to an auditor, he got a different role. I click OK. And highlighting won't take effect till you restart the system. So I could get out, hit save, close out, and Ch Scott Busing's role has been changed. Now if I look at what his role would be, what, assigns, what his effective permissions are, he's allowed to do quite a bit. But there again, as an administrator, I can go in there and change each role. What that does is it brings us to our final piece of the presentation, and that's the reporting factor. Bullet point number four, our final piece of the presentation, and that's the reporting. And go in here, click on reporting. That brings me to the ability, what reports I have available to report upon. Not just which ones I have, but what format I can bring them in or export them in PDF, Excel. If I want to publish them to a web page, I could. Where a lot of this comes into play, and a lot of the power and the functionality of data flow is hugely advantageous, 
is, as I've stated many times, we're bringing in multiple systems, multiple pieces of information, multiple spreadsheets, and doing evaluations and looking at the information on those. If I want to be able to report on that versus having to go into, into each individual system, exporting or doing a data dump to run a report, I can go in here, select my report. Here I have a well report selected and click OK. I click Run. And this particular report is ready to be viewed and sent to the appropriate hands. And as you can tell, this is for the entire organization. It can give me the timestamp of July 14th. Any associated information I want to have put on there. There again, a lot of the power is that you're able to report on multiple systems, first having to go to them individually and doing reports from each one of those. And with that, I've gone through and done a quick high-level look at Palantir uh, data flow in conjunction with integrated dynamic planning. Now, should you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to take those at this time. Okay, so just um, as mentioned before, if you do have any questions, please type them in the chat box. Um, and we'll be able to answer those for you. So we'll just give this about a minute to see if there's any questions. I don't have anything showing up right now. Um, Stephen, was there anything that you wanted to conclude with or um, maybe a, a typical question that you get from a client that we could cover? Um, kind of the typical question I generally will get um, it kind of focuses around more on the implementation side. Um, this is a a system that's uh, is r rather easily implement. I say easily, uh, less difficult to implement. Um, when you're looking at data repositories or data warehouses, um, when you're looking at SAP, uh, Hyperion, things like that, um, there's that misnomer that it takes months. Um, to to have something like that implemented, not with Palantir Dataflow. Uh, we can come in within a matter of weeks, have something set up and uh, user and be able to be used within the organization rather quickly. Um, so we don't have any other questions for today, um, but I would like to take this time to thank you, Stephen, for taking time out of your day, as well as the attendees who were able to make it today's webinar. Um, if you do have any questions at all, please feel free to contact us at marketing at palantirsolutions.com. Uh, next week on July 15th, on Wednesday at the same time, we do have another webinar. It's entitled Integrated Economic Modeling with Palantir Cash. Um, and this webinar will focus on quickly modeling the economics of oil and gas investments across the value chain uh, from production to delivery. You can sign up that for on our website and we'll also send out a mailing for that. So thanks again, Stephen, and thank you for everybody who attended. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.